So the solution is these types, this type of technology that we're going to see in a few minutes, this visible speech mapping, uh, it's most often called. That is the, um, that is the real ear measurement that of choice today is visible speech mapping. Okay. Um, it does several things for us. It gives the patient the confidence because now seeing is believing. They're not only hearing the difference or hearing about the benefit from you, they're actually seeing the difference and seeing the benefit because they can understand what they see on the measurement screen. Um, it shows the patient the benefit uh, and it offers them the latest technology. You are merging now art and science. Okay. You, you do, um, probably not aware of this, but there was an article that was published in Consumer Reports in 2009 that had more impact on the hearing instrument uh, world than any other article, than, than a thousand articles published on this subject in professional journals. And it was also put in, a, that article got into AARP magazine too, mm -hmm. so. Right, yeah. I'm a member of AARP and that's, yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, that, that was everywhere. And um, I, I have people tell me even today, now it's 2011, and they say, I have patients that bring that into me because they saved it. They framed it. <laughs> and uh, because it is something that, um, that people are really interested in. It's the first time there's been uh, an article for the general public like that that has said so much and been so, had such high awareness. Okay? And here's two quotes from it. One was, search for a hearing instrument dispenser that uses a real ear measurement device in the fitting process. Uh, the reporter that wrote this, the journalist that wrote up this article, spent months working on it and researching it. Did a great, great job. And tr found, tried to find somewhere, some, that she could go where she would get an unbiased professional opinion, an objective opinion from an expert, a world-renowned expert. Well, she ended up at Vanderbilt. Good thing that she did. She ended up, of course, if she ended up here, it would be just as good. But she ended up at, at Vanderbilt, very high-profile uh, audiology clinic, and she ended up talking to uh, Todd Ricketts, very well-known. It's a name that you don't, maybe you don't know now, but you will know. Uh, in fact, he might be a speaker at the Alabama Academy of uh, Audiology meeting this September down in Gulf Shores or wherever it is. Uh, but anyway, um, so she got an insight from Vanderbilt and their clinic and observed for quite a while what they do in the fitting process. And so she knew all about real ear measurement. And another quote, besides telling consumers to find somebody that does this because they are going to be the ones that merge art and science and do a better job. And she'd also heard from Todd Ricketts that of hearing aids that are fit without the an in-the-ear measurement, a measurement actually done on the ear, as many as two-thirds are misfit uh, because they did a study. They did a study of uh, getting patients in who had acquired a hearing aid outside of Vanderbilt, because this would never happen there, just like it wouldn't happen here. Uh, but acquired hearing aids from various sources, and these hearing aids had been fit, personally fit, for them. Uh, and then they actually made measurements on those and found out that two-thirds of them, 66% right, are misfit, and typically underfit. Often, most often, the device is not even making the high frequencies audible at all. Okay. Uh, and people who um, convert to making real ear measurements when they didn't before, they believed the myth, right? Or they were just complacent. Complacency is part of it because they feel, well, look, I'm doing fine. I'm selling 20 hearing aids a month. 
everybody's happy. I'm bringing home the money. Um, no, and nobody's, nobody's returning their hearing aids. And, yeah. Right. If they're not returning their hearing aids, um, then um, why fix it if it ain't broke? Is a common saying. A common saying. The thing is that we've had a major recession a couple of years ago in 2008, and today consumers are a little bit more weary than they were in the past. And today people are, that return rate is going back up again um, because, again, the expectations and the price um, need to be adjusted. So, anyway. Uh, people who are converts, and we're getting more and more converts now than ever, and I'll show you some reasons for that, some other reasons for that, too. Uh, converts meaning they dispensed without making any measurements in the ear, and now, all of a sudden, they acquire something like this, and now they're doing it. Uh, and, and doing it consistently. Some will do it only in certain cases. I got a tough to fit. This woman is complaining. She's coming back a hundred times. I got to do something. Let's let's get the machine out and use that. Okay. I don't mean them because they they don't have large enough numbers to come to any conclusions that make any sense. But converts who decide I'm changing my standard of care. My standard of care is going to be to do this to use this science because I believe in it. Why do I believe in it? Because every expert, not just my instructors at Auburn University when I was a graduate student, but every expert in the field agrees with this and has said it, you know? It's not a myth. So, I'm, I'm now going to do it. I've decided for one reason or another. I can, either, I can finally afford the equipment I thought I couldn't before. That's a myth because all you got to do is sell a few more hearing aids and you can afford it. Um, but also, once they do that and start using it on every patient, they always, 100% of them say, I will never do without it again because I did an experiment. Since I was used to not using it, I would first set the hearing aid up with the fitting software without it, whichever way I would have done it before. Uh, I would select first fit, I would do whatever, okay? Let them let, use the manufacturer's default gain settings for, that are consistent with the hearing loss. Uh, but then, since I've changed my standard of care and I now make a measurement, I would make a measurement on what I'd already done. And, and about two-thirds of the time, I would find that I'm not satisfied. I could do much better. And so I tweak it now when it's in the ear and get it right and, and then hit save, program the hearing aid. So. Well, I, this is for, for you and they don't know this yet, but next, um, Dr. Klusing and I were talking about their homework assignment for next week. Next Wednesday they're going to be, learn, they're going to be doing speech mapping. So their homework assignment will be um, on four people they're given an audiogram and they'll be doing it on each other. Kind of not, not that severe an audiogram. Yeah. But they're, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to they're going to look at soft speech, average speech, and loud speech at, in a first fit. Then they're going to do the same and print that out. Then they're going to look at audibility, you know, using NAL1 or yeah. ESL. Then they're going to redo that on the final fit, and then they're going to redo it when they've actually programmed it to you. Yeah. Uh, so you'll be doing this exact experiment. You'll be seeing, what, what if I didn't make a measurement, how would it have come out on its own? I wouldn't have known unless I looked at it after that and, and found that. So, so this, this I think you'll find is true, that without making a real ear measurement, the majority, 66% of hearing aids are misfit, mostly under. So. There are several of these kinds of things on the market, three main manufacturers, okay? Um, one is GN Autometrics. GN, uh, GN is, stands for Great Nordic. And GN Autometrics, um, the GN company owns Resound. They also own Maxon. Uh, and they own ICS Medical. 
uh, resound, of course, you know, as a hearing aid manufacturer. Um, and uh, Maxson is an audiometer and middle ear analyzer. Uh, not, not uh, well, it's a, an audiometer and tympanometer manufacturer. Uh, and um, they also own ICS Medical, which is a manufacturer of evoked potential equipment and vestibular equipment. Okay. Um, so they're one of the um, of, of, of several major manufacturers of audiometric instrumentation, and they have a device called uh, an Oracle Speech Link. Uh, this patient is wearing it around his neck. The the uh, no link is attached to it, doesn't have to be. Uh, and he's got two probes in his ears. And a lot of dispensing audiologists and other dispensers actually put up big screens because they want the patient to see this. Many of these things are designed to be pretty graphic uh, where you can easily explain uh, to, to the patient, uh, you know, and, uh, the benefit of the hearing aid, the need for the hearing aid. Is the, is the is the is the speaker around his neck? No. What? Uh, there's a there's a speaker out on the table oh, okay, that you can't okay. see. That's just a measurement device. Oh, okay. Uh, and it connects with uh, with a PC. The PC drives the speakers, and it connects uh, to a PC with the same Bluetooth that drives this. Okay. Yeah. It's it's a wireless connection. Uh, Gian Autometrics is also the manufacturer of the Hypro and the Nolan, uh, even though that's not publicized. See, this is what their thing looks like when it's sitting on the charger oh, yeah. stand. Okay, so that is inexpensive. That's $4,500. Wow. Now, they're coming out with a new one, and it's going to be $6,500, $2,000 more. Uh, later this year, it's called the Free Fit, but it'll look exactly the same, and this is upgradable to that. Okay, and just have more features on it. They're all trying to compete with this. Uh, then there is a company in Florida called Medrex, M-E-D-R-X. Uh, and they make a little real ear measurement device called the Avant. Right? That you find mostly in hearing aid distributors that are not, hearing aid dispensers that are not audiologists. Uh, this, this, the biggest market they have are non-audiology dispensers. So I do have several audiologists outside ENT in Atlanta who has two of these and swear by it. Yeah. Um, then there is the Cadillac of these things, which is the AudioScan Verifit. AudioScan is the manufacturer. They have a portable version of that, too. Uh, and uh, I don't know if you've seen the portable version, but it is it operates very much like this, except that it only has one probe, and it has a few uh, less capabilities than the verified.